All right, folks, welcome to the 23rd of August, Aries Working Group Call. Um, we have some uh, continuing good and important topics on this call today. Appreciate you being here. Uh, this is a Hyperledger call, and so the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Uh, with the link in the, the wiki link for the meeting agenda, you're welcome to uh, make any changes useful to the community. Add yourself to the attendees list if you wish, um, or make any other changes that would be useful. Um, do we have anyone new today that would like to introduce themselves? Glad all of us are returning and glad you're here. Uh, announcements, by full this pause for August. AFJ is bi-weekly during August. Um, and then the, uh, the, uh, the DIFDIDCOM users group meets the second, third, and fourth Mondays. And there's the link to the schedule and, and the stuff there as well. Um, any other announcements we should have on but don't? Hey, Sam, I'll mention um, <clears throat> there's work starting up at Trust Over IP on a thing called Did Web S um, that people may be interested in or maybe not. But anyway, it's a did method that is um, compatible with Did Web but adds an S for secure onto it with the idea um, that um, the controller of the did uh, provide uh, at this point a, a carry audit log of the key events and transaction events um, that the controller performed related to the did. So um, that adds uh, a measure of um, history and provenance for the key so that you know um, that all of the key rotations and so on were done by the controller, um, including things like a redirect to a different um, web website in case you know two companies merge, um, supports fancy uh, features that carry uh, support such as uh, multi-signature support, pre-rotation, and then also has the concept of um, uh, within the web folder of the did web s and using um, the did URL path capability um, signed files that might be associated with the did and adds one other thing, which is a um, tentatively called a who is folder which is intended to contain verifiable credentials or verifiable presentations that for which the subject is the did itself. And so the idea there is a, um, a controller of a did, say an organization, could publish its public verifiable credentials in a who is folder so that they're easily discovered um, in a known place and the verifiable credentials can be um, processed without having to um, message or contact the uh, controller of the did. So some interesting features there. Um, if people are interested, there's conversations starting up on in Trust over IP for that. Cool. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other announcements? Uh, Stephen, if you have a link, that would be a great uh, aside to the notes I, I added. At the end of saying all that, I realized I didn't have a link handy, and but I should. <laughs> so I'll, I'll take a look. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, excellent. Any uh, release status or work updates from our various code projects? All right, um, we have on the agenda today uh, a quick marketing update. Uh, we have, um, uh, I have a topic uh, about did rotation for did v one um, and then that has effects on our previous conversations, uh, including the, the presentation that Stephen gave last week um, about the, the various options that we have and some related stuff. Um, are there other topics or any other adjustments that we want to make to our agenda before we get going?
All right. Um, uh, Helen or Alex, whoever's on deck today. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Um, so just two notes. One is that uh, we are, we, we sort of were the victim of the uh, five week uh, August. And I believe that the calendar invite for our meeting was set for yesterday when it should be the last Tuesday of the month. So apologies to anybody who might've showed up yesterday, but we will be meeting next Tuesday um, to discuss Aries marketing. Um, and the link should be the same uh, as is in the calendar, but just next week, um, working with ride to get that updated uh now so it uh these five week months don't trip us up from <laughs> trip us up in the future um on i think a couple meetings ago we uh presented the the new hyperledger hyperledger aries draft page in the wiki um it's it's just there kind of in the left hand column if you open up the wiki so um the link is there i believe uh, yep in the notes so uh feel free to take a look at it um I mean, actually let me just i'll drop it in the chat here for folks um would love to get feedback on it um this is the new uh some of the the language that's coming out of the aries uh marketing working group calls and um we're also working with ben um at the uh with the staff at hyperledger to get that updated on their main website too since that is this if you if you do a search for hyperledger aries it's the hyperledger.org website that pops up first um so we're making sure that um it's updated in all places so would love feedback please attend the meeting on tuesday if you have comments questions concerns um and otherwise please uh just take a look at this page and give us any updates and you'll see actually if you scroll down um there we're we're also presenting uh some of the repositories with some descriptions as well so if you have anything to say about um how those are represented we'd absolutely love to hear from you um and make sure that all your voices are being heard um anything else alex that i missed no that's perfect uh any questions for me from anyone all righty uh, thank you, Helen and Alex. I want to add a plug here. Um, we're all busy doing stuff and we're all busy building stuff generally. Um, and, and so marketing is one of those things that we kind of are aware of, but don't necessarily um, place at the top of our importance list. And this is a, a mistake that's really easy to make. And I think we've made far too often um, in the Aries community in the past. Um, and so my my plea here is that this is important. Um, the, the the technical quality of what we're building, while important, is not the only thing that's a, uh, that, that's important in our effort, but rather to uh, have it be accurately represented and and be understandable by those approaching it um, is is also critical to the project's success. And so, um, if you, I would encourage you um, to to take some time to review these these materials, the link uh, here is is uh, is in the marketing update section, and take a look and offer feedback. If there's something that isn't being represented well, or you have ideas on how something might be explained, um, then then reviewing that work is is good. Um, and uh, and Alex and and Helen have been doing a fantastic job uh, with this, um, but they need our uh, review and effort from a technical side of things to make this work. And so I, I implore you to to try and make time uh, to 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 have some review of this in addition to the awesome technical work that you're doing, um, so that uh, so that we can have our our work accurately represented and 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 be well understood by those that are approaching it. So I I very much appreciate their work and 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 my my encouragement is heavy to to make some time um, to, to dig in and, and, and work. If you're interested in, in attending those meetings, uh, the, the marketing meeting, uh, here's the, the link there. And that is, uh, that is open and everyone is uh, eagerly invited to attend. Um, if you are in an organization that has a marketing person, um, then, uh, or, or anyone who would be interested in that aspect of it, uh, technical writers or, or any, anyone really, um, then, uh, then that would, they're also welcome in that group. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll quit soapboxing on that particular topic, but, um, but I, I just wanted to highlight the importance of it um, and how, how effective it can be in helping the work be recognized. I appreciate that, Sam. Yeah. And I would also plug that uh, any like business development leaders, product leaders, 
folks that are, you know, doing any frontline customer facing sales roles, those are all good people to bring to this meeting. I know marketing is sometimes a, a dirty word <laughs> in some circles. Um, so we would love to have a, a variety of voices who think, um, you know, think critically about the business aspect of this project and the uses. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Our next fun project we'll be working on is a explainer video uh, for the, um, to be used everywhere, but mostly on the, um, primarily on the hyperledger.org website on the Aries page there. So if you have thoughts about what an explainer video might work uh, look like, um, we that's what we'll be discussing next. Thanks, Helen. Anything else on marketing? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay, next topic is uh, is is did rotation. Um, this uh, is something that that uh, that I was convinced of uh, by both Stephen's conversation and um, and uh, Daniel Bloom isn't here to defend himself, but but also uh, convinced me that uh, that this would um, be a good uh, a good thing to do. So Didcom v2 has did rotation as a, as a feature of the core uh, protocol and it's handled with headers um, and. Uh, I began to realize that did rotation uh, in didcom v1 would be uh, would be a useful feature, not just for solving the unqualified did problem, uh, but also for enabling transitions to to didcom v2 as that arrives. And so, I uh, have a have a link here, and I have written up a. Um, a, a proposed protocol for rotating dids uh, with feedback, uh, and, and if it, if it's still a good idea, then I'll go ahead and submit this, um, and uh, and we'll and we'll make this work. Um, this uh, I will dis uh, I will likely submit this to the Aries RFCs. Given that this is Didcom v1 specific, I'll I'll also list it in the um, in, uh, in on didcom.org, but the, the main hosting for it will be here, uh, given that it is oriented specifically to didcom v1, as didcom v2 already has uh, a way of doing this. Um, the uh, There are some impacts of, of, of using this on our current conversation that I'll get to in a second, but just to quickly walk through, um, there's, there's two messages here. Um, there's the rotate message and the act message. Uh, the rotate message indicates the did that should be used in the future to identify the party that sends this message. Um, and so uh, if you if you have been using a, a an unqualified peer did, um, then notifying the other party uh, that you are using um, uh, a new did for that uh, is, is a way of, of cleaning that up so that uh, so they so they have that. Um, and uh, and then the act message basically comes back in response. Um, and then after the act message is is you know this message is sent and the act message is received, it's expected that the new uh, the 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 keys associated with the new did be used. Now, if you followed along with our previous conversations, uh, we've talked about the fact that uh, that you can use existing keys to uh, as part of a new did and in the peer methods that we're talking of, which means the actual keys in play may not change. Um, <laughs> Excuse me for the for the messages actually being sent, but um, the the coordination of that did is going to be important uh, to enable uh, uh, number one the qualified dids to not be in use, but also to be in place by the time didcom v2 arrives. It also allows if you happen to be using a did method that does not have a didcom v2 endpoint to be able to pass a did that, that does have a didcom v2 endpoint. And that way the the, the discoverability of uh, of your support of didcom v2 can happen via this, this normal way and the fact that it would be uh, known from the did that you passed. Um, and so this feature here gives us a uh, an easy way to update existing um, existing connections uh, with uh, with dids that can that can uh, be used to make that happen. Um, there's a, there's a little bit of an open question here. Um, there's something that I'm not super satisfied with, but I don't uh, have the good answer to, um, and that is uh, and that is this one here. Um, the when you send the rotate message because of the asynchronous nature of Didcom, uh, you um, you may receive messages for the the previous did or or against the previous key in didcom v1 for some period of time before the receiving party has a chance to receive and process the message. 
Um, and so uh, the, the wording that I've used here is that uh, the, the, the rotating party is expected to receive messages on both the existing and the new, uh, the new did and uh, the associate keys for a reasonable period. I don't like reasonable period because it's super squishy. Um, but I, uh, but I don't, uh, I can't come up with, or I haven't yet come up with a better wording for that. Um, and it's, it's possible that we could clarify with some further explanation, meaning uh, they should expect to receive messages, certainly until they receive an ACK message, um, but, but may want to do, uh, may want to do that in excess of the ACK message in case there are multiple parties on the other side that may not have all received the, the message uh, simultaneously. Um, and that's that we don't have very many uh, situations where you have multiple agents tied to a did yet. Um, but in that in that case, then that would that would certainly cause a problem. And uh, so this is uh, relatively simple um, in the sense that uh, that there's only two messages um, and, it, and it doesn't necessarily require that the other party update their did simultaneously, although this is this would certainly be a goal that we have. Um, so this is relatively straightforward so and, and relatively simple. So why did we why did I do it? Um, uh, one thing is that it enables uh, switching to a did that has, has a didcom2 service endpoint. Um, and that would that's a really useful feature as we adopt didcom v2 um, within our ecosystem to be able to know if the in fact the other party is capable of receiving a, a didcom v2 endpoint or, or didcom uh, v2 messages. Um, and so that's a mechanism that would enable that anyway. But the main problem that I did it uh, for is that it decouples, or at least the most immediate problem, is that it decouples the process of uh, moving off of an unqualified did to a qualified did uh, from, the, from the decision about which did you actually rotate to. Um, and so what this means is that if we adopt uh, did rotation support, um, as an intermediate step, then the need for a larger community coordinated update no longer exists um, for the sake of doing a strict translation between unqualified dids and whatever the new form is. Um, I, it's, uh, I, it's probably more efficient uh, as a community for us to still make a general decision about which did method we are moving to, mostly for the fact that that did method could be supported. Um, and that way there's there's few there's less variability as a community in what we're transitioning uh, to away from unqualified dids. But it decouples that in a way that I think adds the, the necessary flexibility and allows people to be compliant in, in an easy way. The other thing that a community coordinated update could still be used to do is to set a sort of a time uh, a, a time uh, goal as a community on when this is both supported uh, and uh, and is able to be to be leveraged and the time by which we are all you know actually rotating off of those unqualified dids so that the, those are officially deprecated um, and, uh, and and we can and, and newcomers can begin writing software that it, that does not contain support for them. Um, which is uh, which is a key thing um, as as folks enter the community. And so that's the goal. Um, I uh, I have a, a comment about did method support and discover features, but before I get there, um, any comments or questions or thoughts about uh, this protocol and its use? Warren. Yeah, um, I was just thinking more about the whole reasonable amount of time to support the multiple dids and um, I'm wondering whether there is a mechanism within the existing protocols to know like uh, either message sequence numbers or timestamps or whatever so that you would be able to know that if a message was is was being generated by a party after it had sent you an ACK that you would know that um, or whether it was prior to that, and thus you would be able to say, yes, I accept this message, or no, I don't. Um, there are, uh, you can include sent times as part of the message. Um, and and that's, uh, that's going to be at least consistent by the sender, right? Meaning if, if sender A, even if their clock is skewed a little bit, it's likely to be relatively correct to the um, to, to other messages. So you can compare the timestamp of, of the act they send versus the timestamp of a, um, you know, of, of any other message they sent. It could be one mechanism for doing so. Um, I, I will mention too that the, this rotation is not, um, 
and and I don't there's no commentary here in the protocol about it, but this rotation is not necessarily an indication that the other did should not uh, should no longer be trusted or that the key associated with the other did should no longer be trusted. Um, more of a sense that here's this other did that I would that I would like to actually use. Um, and so it's a little bit more of a friendly rotation in the sense that um, it's not necessarily a security risk in the in the use of it. Uh, but rather, uh, hey, we're, we're you're, you know, I'm, I'm moving over here for a logistical reason um, to continue the relationship without with having to reestablish that. Um, I don't know if that impacts kind of where you're thinking or not. Warren, about that, about that re reasonable period of time. Well, I'm not sure that this, um, it doesn't feel right to me that you send out this notification and you get an acknowledgement and then somebody continues to use the old one like that doesn't feel right to me that like whether your intention is to you know it seems that this is saying hey i'm rotating and if you acknowledge it then okay and if you don't well then i'll accept the old one and perhaps ad nauseum if 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 i don't think it's a risk right um, but then it's up to the receiver to decide, but the sender, if they acknowledge are to my mind, they are acknowledging that they will use the new one from this time going forward. Um, I, I, I totally uh, agree with that. The, the, the wrinkle shows up in software that is, is a little bit more distributed than that, in that there's various, um, you know, pieces of code running in a distributed manner that might be sending messages as opposed to receiving them. And the receiving party can 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 receive that and begin its own sort of internal synchronization process. Um, but uh, but guaranteeing that no message is sent, you know, without the absolutely most current data information um, is something that I'm a little bit reluctant, uh, perhaps foolishly to impose. Um, and, and the perhaps foolishly is, is that I don't think we have very many scenarios yet in our ecosystem where there's multiple agents in play or there's software that is distributed enough that it's not using a common data store for the DIDs that it has for other parties. Um, and so maybe that's foolish in the sense that, that, that it doesn't really matter, um, it did, particularly at this point in the development of the ecosystem. Um, and so we could adjust the language if we found it useful within this, within this, um, this protocol to say that you you receive messages until the ACK message has been received and then you you know no longer process them. Um, the the asynchronous nature of message delivery means that it's possible um, that if two you know if if uh, if a message was uh, was sent um, just prior to the ACK message being sent and then the ACK message is sent uh, that um, that the they might be delivered in the in the opposite order that they were that they were sent, which means that um, that message would then be cut off and could create some weird states for the receiving party. I, th I think that that is a, a possible scenario, but I think that could be handled with a like a fixed time window after receiving an act that you will accept the old one and you know like five minutes or something like that. Right. Um, well. Yes. Anyways, it we're we're it, the the problem is is it's like we're super into the edge cases, right? And and there's there's so many weird things we can imagine. Um, how probable they are is a, is a totally separate discussion. Um, I I think that uh, if we leave it a little bit loose, it's up to the implementer to decide about how far that really goes. And in practicality, I don't think we're going to run into very many scenarios where this creates a a, a substantial snarl. Um, but Stephen, I'm curious what you have to say about this, or if, are you talking about something else? I had some thoughts on the reasonable time. I think there are scenarios where the reason you're rotating is because you can no longer use the DIDs or, or won't be for very long. So it may not even be in the control. Um, so the example I'm thinking of is the mediator you're using goes away and you need to rotate all of your DIDs to use a new mediator. Oh, that's actually a great use for this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's now, the, so the way why? this is, so didconv v2, you actually send the message from the new did as the step of the rotation. Um, and then you can include a, a signed assertion uh, using the key associated with the old did that, that, that that's allowed to happen. And we did that on purpose for, for reasons like that. 
Um, for simplicity, I didn't do the same thing here in the sense that you, you pre-request the rotating of the did instead of post-authorizing the rotation of the did. Um, and so you would have to know in advance uh, that it's going away. But your point is good in the sense that they, they, they may say, hey, within a week, I can't use this anymore. So I'm going to send the did rotation um, that contains the did that references a new mediator. In that way, this relationship can continue even though that piece of infrastructure is, is, is shifting. Um, and so that's a that's a that's a super good use case uh, there. And I acknowledge that this doesn't solve all the use cases that the rotation in Didcom v2 does, partially because I'm trying to help us get there, <laughs> in the sense that uh, rather than reinvent or backport all of those features, um, just giving us enough to like reasonably get there is is kind of my goal here. Does that make sense, Stephen? Yeah. Yeah. My I love other... your I love your example of, of of mediator rotation though. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. The um... Second question I had, so I've got a few. Um, second question relates to the next comment you have, which I just read there. You didn't say that, but I, I wanted to be sure of that. So the auth cryptid message does require signing by the a key from the old did, because I think that is necessary. Uh, it, it it isn't in this. It isn't when you're using auth crypt. And are we always using auth crypt in Didcom v1? Um, in practice, I believe that's true. Technically, you don't have to, but I believe in practice, uh, I'm unaware of any software that, that does not auth crypt messages as standard practice. Could we not add a signature explicitly to this so that there is a chain? You, you can, but the only case that would be useful is if you're not auth crypting messages. Well, I mean, you just wouldn't know that you wouldn't care. Um, I mean, it would be easy enough to add a signature over the hash of the two did. It, as verification. But, but, but you could, but why? Um, yeah, I mean, if offcrypt, if we're certain offcrypt is used, um, that's fine. I just, this is an area I don't know enough of. So I'm never, I'm not, I don't know enough of when offcrypt is used or when it's not. So that's why I was going to raise the message. But if you're, confident that Authcrypt is being used in all the time, then then that's fine. Well, it, it will be now by declaration of this protocol. Um, <laughs> in, the, yeah, in the sense that, right, yeah. is that if you properly implement this protocol, then, then the message must be sent using Authcrypt or signed, and, and either one is sufficient. That way, um, in that way, you have assurance, in fact, that, the, that, the, that this is an authorized rotation and can't be sent by somebody else. Right. So I would add that to that message, the reason it's got to be off crypt and why it's got to be sent that way. Um, just to that message. Um, okay. Um, you did not include a did and did doc, which means we preclude anything that requires a did doc, such as did peer one. That's correct. Okay. I am... Totally good with that. So you could use did peer two here, um, obviously, and um, that would be good. I think it is time we updated the did peer spec to deprecate all but did peer two and three. Um, I think uh, as a as a separate activity, yes, I believe it's time to do that. Um, yeah. As well as as well as change some of the commentary. There, there's historically been some some commentary in there that has not been super useful, um, oh. and so that. Uh, and, so, and so some of that may be, may be helpful too, not just deprecation messages, but for example, there's there's discussions of of sort of some theory in the did method spec that, that may not really so be needed there. It, it is long needed to get rid of it. And, and it talks about using key rotation and this simple message gets rid of all of that crap, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, and we can just have it down to did peer two and three and that's it now the only thing i'm worried about i don't know if anyone from afj is on the call but as far as i know afj has implemented did peer one and um and so basically we would want them to um basically undo that and remove did peer one support and just go with did peer two and three. And I don't know, I'd be interested in their comments on that. I don't know if anyone's here on that. From it would be, I don't think they have to remove it, but the rest of the community is not going to seek to implement it. 
Um, Fair. Right. So, um, and, and, and Daniel Hardman wrote, did come, uh, or, or uh, the, the method one in peer, uh, in the peer did spec. And he has uh, in uh, announced his intentions that it be deprecated um, in favor of sort of other technologies and in the specific ones he were, was mentioning, whereas, you know, the development of carrier related technologies there. So, um, so that's fine. Um, uh, cool. Um, any, um, Stephen, any, any other comments? Um, the last comment was you did talk about simultaneous or anything like that. And I don't think that needs to be even mentioned. Um, each party operates independently. Um, so nothing in the in this should talk about simultaneous updates or anything like that. Any any sort of hint of sort of um, coordinated updates or anything like that. That is not needed. What's needed here is a rotating party is saying I'm switching, and the receiving party says okay. Um, if if the receiving party decides to do it themselves for their own, that's totally up to them. But that's an independent um, activity. Agree? Yes. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Um, um, last, this is awesome and long, long, long overdue. Way to go. This is excellent. Well, I was kind of fighting it because I was trying to avoid inventing new things in order to solve this problem. But by the time we got deeper into our discussion, it became obvious that we're inventing new stuff anyway, and that this was probably a far simpler thing to do. Um, and also uh, assist the community and the, in the movement from any did that doesn't happen to support did two to a did that does happen to support or, or, or did combi two, um, and, and and so the two birds one protocol thing kind of convinced me that it was just needed. Um, so I appreciate Stephen both your previous presentation and 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 in his absence uh, Daniel Bloom for for convincing me that this was a good idea. Uh, Ariel. Yeah, no, just to 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 clarify that for actually I think. There will be no problem because what we are going to do is to migrate to uh, to the peer two. So we will still be supporting peer the peer one for 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 a while, but but our the idea is to to just uh, drop it as well. Right. So no problems from the FGA front. No. No. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying and sharing. Um, in the middle there, Steve McCowan, I, I saw your hand up. Did, did, was your topics covered or did you have anything you wanted to add there? Oh, I was just going to make a comment about the uh, when do dids expire uh, discussion. And I think um, as I thought about that, I, I don't think it's really too much of an issue because the question really is, how long will you accept communications on your old did? Not how long can somebody else send you communications using that old did? And so I think the problem kind of minimizes itself based on what the um, agent is willing to accept. And um, yeah, that, that was my comment is all. Um, yes. So Daniel Blue made a comment to me along a similar vein is that he expected most implementers would, would simply uh, upon receiving the information and then sending the act would just um, would just overwrite and forget the old did, which means that it would be effective immediately, which is technically compliant with the spec and the easiest to program. And so because that because that way of implementing it is simplest, he anticipated that that would be the most common thing done. Um, which which is after the ACK, um, uh, and, and then um, uh, and and is compliant with the spec. Yeah, I I think that's awesome. I I think that it will just people will migrate and then dids will drop off by by rapid attrition. Um, coding it, that's what I would do too. So, right. Um. Excellent. Um, uh, any other questions or comments about the rotate dead protocol? Hey, Sam. Quick yeah. question. Um, this is where um, changing things is where um, risk comes in. 
because somebody, well, the off crypt is what controls it, right? I, I'm worried about, I'm, I'm just thinking about this is, doing things like this is where um, people try to break into systems. They, you know, you change your SIM card or you change your email address. You know, you're kind of doing that. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of risk there, um, particularly if we've, we've got that off script description. But have you given any thought to that or or any concerns? Well, the provenance, right, is what you're getting at, is that if you can't prove that this is the path forward uh, intended by the owner of the of the first did, then this is a risky thing. If I just show up and be like, oh, yeah, I used to use this did and now I want you to use this did, but there's no actual provenance there. That's that's a, a perfect uh, injection attack that allows, uh, you know, another party to to intercept them or, or to place themselves um, in the middle of the relationship or simply take it over. Um, that's why in didcom v2, there is a signature across it. But the reason there's a signature there and not here is that uh, is that that is uh, sent after the, the did has been rotated, meaning you, you you don't warn them using the old did that you're going to use the new did. You just send a message with the new did and include a link back to what the old did used to be with the signature in place. Um, and the, there's efficiency reasons we did that. I still believe that was the right choice, um, but it's far simpler to to pre-warn in, in our didcom v1 case, even though it's not quite as efficient. The, 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 the slight lo lack of efficiency um, is I think warranted for the simplicity of the protocol itself. Um, uh, I'll, I'm gonna update this to include a message that says, if you receive a did rotate message that is not signed or was not received with Oscript, you must discard it. Um, to, to further uh, underline the fact that this has to have be provided in a way uh, where provenance uh, is, is clear um, in the sense that uh, that that the owner of the of the key associated with the previous did is authorizing the move to the new did, and that way it still relies on key ownership, which is the basic premise of security in didcom anyway. So nothing changes there. Does that answer your question to that effect, Stephen? Thank you. Yeah. So one um, one final clarifying question, if I may. Yep. So re related to that, which is. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the internals of the software architectures that would use this. Would the receiver of a particular message, which perhaps is registering interest in some message type, um, would it necessarily know that the underlying um, thing was authcrypted or not? Um. Or is it in practice, it doesn't matter anyways. I don't want to be pedantic about this. No, no. Uh, so in uh, the in practice, I don't think it matters um, in the sense that when you receive a message, the first thing that you do is decrypt it. And because it's using authcrypt, you both, of course, decrypt it using your key and in the process, identify the key of the sender. And then the key of the sender in didcom v1 is used to look up the relationship, essentially the did, but the relationship um, of the sending party, which means that if you sent it, uh, you you can only send the message if you actually have the key, the, the private key of the sender, um, which means that I can't fake it. I can't, I can't fake that using my key, but say rotate Stevens did, uh, because you'll notice that there's no from did indicated in the message here. And that's because the from did is actually pulled from the message that was sent in the first place. Now, the only case would be that if you receive a, an unencrypted message, um, and and you're just going to believe the from that it presents, um, but that's that's not a thing we that we currently do. And I believe all existing software um, lines this up in the in the fact that uh, well, actually it doesn't matter in didcom v1 because keys are the are, are how you indicate that. In didcom v2, there's an internal did that's actually represented, and there's notes in the spec that uh, that say that you must upon receiving a message make sure that the key that was used to sign the message is actually the from key listed on the inside if it's present. Um, and so I don't believe this is an issue in the sense that um, if you, for example, sent an unencrypted message to, message to Akapai or to AFJ, just to pick two common examples here, I actually believe they generally fail. That would be interesting to test. Um, but, uh, but I believe that, uh, that, that authcrypted messages is by and far the norm. Um, it would be interesting to know um, out of curiosity, if either of those packages would even operate on an unencrypted message that was transmitted to its endpoint. 
it's likely going to fail the decryption process because it isn't encrypted. And I think they do that for all inbound messages. That would, that would be worth taking a quick look at, but I believe it's a non-issue. Is that a sufficiently satisfactory answer? Or is that still squishy enough that we need to make sure we, we understand the behavior? Well, I think to, to um, Stephen's point about uh, like a potential avenue for attack injection, we should probably verify that messages that aren't encrypted are rejected. Otherwise, some other layer in the stack might just be reg registering interest in a particular message type, receive it, and not know. It, it could be. Anyways, can, anyways, that, that, is... that's the only thing. So, like, I, it's fine to put it in the spec, but if the implementations don't actually do it, yeah, do it, then. So, it, I can anyways. highlight this very, very large in the spec, and what that means is that uh, it would be really hard for someone to implement this without seeing that in particular note. Um, and then, of course, it's possible for them to do bad things, um, but but uh, but we can we can make this as as loud as we can, um, you know, for for the for this particular requirement that you that you are to discard any message not received either authcrypted or signed, um, and I think that that would be, um, I think that that would be probably as far as we can reasonably go from a spec perspective to make that happen. As a community, we can pay attention to all the software packages we use to, to make sure that, um, that at least with the implementation of this particular protocol, it, it, uh, it, you know, it, it ignores un, you know, unencrypted or unsigned messages. So part of that's a spec perspective, which we just need to make it as obvious as we can. The other part is a community perspective, and then that's something that we, that we verify as we're touching the software that, that we're interacting with. So really good. Okay. So there's a related concept here to did rotation and that it, uh, before you rotate to a did, it would be a really good idea if you knew that the other party was capable of actually resolving that did. And um, because otherwise you're going to rotate to a did that they're incapable of using, which kind of effectively hangs up by like suddenly, you know, it's, the, it's the effect of like suddenly switching, uh, you know, irrevocably to a different language when you're talking to someone. If I understand that we're speaking in English and you also speak Spanish, I can sw switch to Spanish and it works out. If I switch to Spanish without a way of, of revoking back to that, then you don't speak Spanish. This is not going to be a long conversation. Um, at least not a two-sided conversation. And so understanding that the other party supports the particular did method is something that you uh, that, that we actually need. And we've talked about this in did features and, and even figured out sort of where to add this over on didcom.org. We have that relatively solved. The thing that I don't particularly like is I was looking at the, how to implement this. How do you actually indicate which, um, which dids you actually support? Uh, Steven, your hands up. I was just going to give an idea at the end of your opening. So I'm queuing myself up. Oh, okay. So here's my problem. What I'd really like to do is simply indicate the did method, like did peer or did indie or did web or did web s to reference the new one being developed. Um, the, the, in the reality of that is a little bit more complicated. Um, and I switched by, uh, for, for example here, to the configuration file of the universal resolver. You can find this by going to uh, dev.uniresolver.io, hit configuration, and it brings up the configuration that this resolver is running with. And each of these drivers here indicate uh, both what kind of test identifiers they are, but also uh, a regular expression that actually matches the identifiers that they provide. Now, um, you could get away with saying, well, did solve is just a method. Um, and, and if you look at like uh, did indie here, we have the same thing where you have uh, you know, you have different actual uh, networks um, and and subnets uh, in operation. And so you can't just say did indie because it'd be really useful to be able to express a, a more um, a more complete uh, indication of, of which subset of that did method you actually support. Um, so there's several did methods that do this, including ion. Um, and, uh, and, and they had to have a, an indicator for, for use on a test net instead of, uh, instead of the main production net. Um, and so expressing it a little bit farther is actually useful. Um, you might want to say, Hey, I, uh, I do did indie sovereign. 
just doing a prefix, which was my next guess, also doesn't particularly work very well because if you say I support Dead Indie Sovereign, then it doesn't indicate whether you support just the Sovereign mainnet or you also support Dead Indie Sovereign, sovereign uh, Builder and Staging as given by the examples here. And so a prefix is a little bit insufficient as well. In our particular case with, with, with Did Peer, uh, the, there's, a, there's an indicator that the algorithm that, that comes immediately after. So you could say I support uh, you know, Did Peer uh, 3 or Did Peer 2 or did peer one, and that would indicate sort of the subset of did peer that you actually support. So this is a little bit of like an internal versioning or an internal subset issue um, that, that's actually coming along. There's another interesting one here, if I can find it, um, where did key is actually indicated, but did key allows the encoding of a variety of different key types, and you may not not actually support them, um, in which case. Um, Um, it becomes a little more complicated. Uh, you'll notice, for example, that they have, so here's a did, and they actually work with TZ, PKH, web, and key. But also, here's the actual key types that they support um, being listed here. Um, and so uh, that is a, um, that's another example of a subset where you might want to indicate that you support, uh, you know, did web, uh, you know, this particular key type. Um, as it's encoded um, instead of the other ones. And so uh, that leaves us to the point where that if we're going to do this, it needs to be done with a regular expression um, in order to follow the example. And I'm going to, I am going to reach out for opinion uh, to Marcus Sabadello, who runs the Universal Resolver. Uh, he's the main developer there and has lots of experience here. I don't really like this because um, you can run into some really weird things with, uh, with, with variability of how different languages support the, the regu regular expression syntax and a bunch of other weird things. Um, and so that, that's really awkward. It's less of a problem for the universe of Resolver because this is the configuration for one particular piece of software. But if we're, discuss if we're discussing the use of this within a protocol, then all of the software has to process it the same way as, uh, as, as provided. And that's kind of messy and I don't really like it. Um, and so uh, we kind of have imperfect uh, ways of doing this. Um, and I'm uh, bringing it up, um, number one, to indicate that I'm plan on pushing this as fast as I can because it's a relevant piece of the puzzle here, but also to hopefully get some advice on how to, how to properly indicate which did methods uh, software actually supports in the Discover Features Protocol. And Stephen, I'm ready for you to provide me all of the answers to my questions. So I'm just wondering if there might be a, a, a slightly easier way to do this. Um, if you send a rotation method and the a other agent doesn't support it, I think it would sh its behavior should be to send a problem report back saying, oh, I don't know that did rotation. That's a great idea. And then as well, if it does support mid rotation, but doesn't support the type you rotate to, you send a problem report back instead of the act. Um, that that is a great idea. I still really want to get did support into uh, into Discover features, um, particularly because in Didcom v two there isn't the opportunity to respond back with a with a problem report because it's it's post rotated, not pre rotated. So this is still a problem, but you're right. I love the idea that there could be a problem report if the if the did being provided is is not resolvable by the receiving party. So that's definitely something that we can do. Um, but but I but uh, but I still really want to add it to the to discover features. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying not to add it to discover features. I'm just saying for this particular use case, we actually could be fairly okay. Yeah, I, I think we could. Uh, it's, I think think we should do both. So Sam, um, I, I would be in favor of doing the prefix approach and suggesting those like the sovereign net to uh, make adjustments in the future to have their prefixes distinguishable between builder staging and main net. That's did indie support. We need to get that for sure. <laughs> Uh, did Indy would is, is among those that would need to actually be modified in order to handle that. Either by inclu always including a network name or by just changing a different character so that you know when sort of the 
uh, the, the delimiter between the networks and the actual thing is, is different so that you know and you can specify sort of the full name of the network. It also means that, for example, if we did the prefix, prefix is so much better in so many ways. It is a little more verbose in the sense that if you support, um, let's say, five out of seven indie networks, you're going to have to list like all five of them as a prefix. But that seems like a, a pretty uh, a, a pretty decent compromise given the overall simplicity of the prefix matching approach. We could also. Uh perhaps in your protocol, leave an option for a different method of declaring what methods you support in the future. Um, and so you have your version one method that says, hey, this is what we kind of think we should do for now, leaving the opportunity for a version two of saying, I support these in a, a different methodology at a later time. Um, that's a good idea. The, the other way that I had thought about doing this was do some sort of subset indicator when you, so here's the did method and here's the list of subsets I support. Um, and that would allow you to sort of restrict uh, that uh, artificially. What I think I can do if I do this right uh, to your point, Kim, is that if I name this carefully, then it allows for a name to list on a side or in, 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 uh, in replacement of um, uh, that method, which means that we can move to a better way if we discover one in the future. I was trying to invent something, uh, avoid inventing something new in the case of the subset, because that's like not a thing that really exists. And so the prefix is kind of like a, a default way of doing the subset that doesn't have to actually be declared by the did method owner. And so that would be a way to, to make that happen. Um, but uh, certainly the subset indicators could be, could be a way to, to also make that happen. Um, and I'll have to fix that now. I think your point is leave room for it in the future so that we can like get smarter as we go and don't have to tear the whole thing down. We can, we can just augment it to solve the problem in a smarter way, which I think is really wise. Other comments? So I think this solves the transition problem in that we don't all have to have code that works exactly the same way that translates the dids of other people, which was the original approach that we were discussing. It allows you to declare yourself which did method you're, you're rolling to. Um, and with the, with the error, Stephen, which I think is a super good idea, um, the, the error included into the protocol um, and, uh, and the, the, the uh, in discover features that you can use as, a, as, a, as sort of a pre-check way of doing this, um, we have a reasonable way to, to move forward. Um, it's still a good idea, I think, to not branch out to 16 different did methods um, just for the sake of, of ease of implementation. And so we may want to discuss this in a community coordinate, a coordinated update anyway. The update, though, is going to be a little looser in the fact that what it says is implement did, ro did rotation as phase one. And then phase two is do all the rotations, <laughs> right? Uh, actually rotate away from, from all of the dids that you own and then in the, in the last phase of the community coordinated update, it will be uh, like, you know, no one receives these dids anymore. Um, and so it's a little bit of a different community coordinated update. I think it's a little bit of a cleaner one in the sense that um, that that, uh, that the approach, I think, is is less prone to detailed failure. Um, and it also sets us up really nicely to, to rotate from a did that does not yet support didcom v1 or didcom v2 to a did that does support didcom v2. Um, which allows for for that sort of that next progression step to happen anyway, and um, and, and it's also nice because uh, you will be able to ideally detect um, and and there's another discover features thing that needs to happen there, but you'd be able to detect that 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 that, that someone else's didcom v2 ready, um, and of course you can always indicate your support of didcom v2, which means that we may not need a uh, hopefully won't need a community coordinate update for that. We can simply use the built-in discoverability uh, features that we have in order to, to do that particular transition, um, which is nicer. It's always preferred to use some sort of discoverability uh, to make that happen. Um, I think the, does anyone else have a, ha, have a better idea than using a prefix indicator um, I, I don't like regex, and it's kind of confirmed uh, by the, the few voices that I've heard. Does anyone have a better idea um, uh, than, than using prefix matching in order to indicate support for different subsets of did methods? S 
So uh, what are the main things that we need to consider uh, in terms of in terms of matching? So there's in some cases you're trying to match a set of networks. In another case, you're trying to match crypto suites that you support, right? Is there yeah, are there other are there yeah. other considerations? In did peer, we have the the numalgo indicator. So it's did peer one, did peer two, did peer three. So it's right. did colon peer colon three. And being able to indicate that you support did peer two or did peer three, right, is a super useful feature uh, to make that happen. Um, so some a, of these things could be handled by like a, maybe that's what you meant by a subset, but like by a list, right? Yeah, yes. Well, what I would do is- Some, some of them anyways. What, what I would do is indicate that you, you can specify a, a list of the did methods that you support. And if you have a did method that requires multiple prefixes to accomplish your goals, meaning you wish to indicate that you support did peer and did peer three, there would simply be two separate entries in the list. Uh, in the prefix list. Oh, include with exclude prefixes. That's interesting, Kim. I will think about that. Uh, Jason, Bitmask, can you explain a little further? Like if the list is gonna be ever growing or changing, can't we just assign um bits to each thing and someone can just you know i mean we <laughs> could, could, like human readable then we're, like, already, but... then we're hosting a registry somewhere and that feels ugly okay yeah um i ideally this list gets semi-long i think in practice this list is likely to be relatively short meaning there's going to be like five or six things there um what we may want to include uh is some sort of indicator of um you, we may want a flag that says I'm using the universal resolver version something. And what that means is that I can resolve anything it can resolve uh, because I happen to be using it. And, and that's that's one sort of like splat way of expanding the list um, or, or, or sort of referring to an externally defined list of supported did methods. Just because you can resolve something doesn't necessarily mean that you can deal with the crypto that that implies right oh yeah that's very true um so i'm going to end up with a pull request for the discovers feature stuff and then we can discuss i'll, I'll circulate it. it's going to be a pull request against the file over in didcom.org and then we can circulate it and i would very much appreciate feedback so that we can be as intelligent as possible um with the with the expectation that we'll be smarter tomorrow than we will be today um and so um so that's really good um we are uh, out of um, um, this is a super interesting topic, actually. Um, we are out of time, um, but uh, but this is fan this is a fantastic discussion. I very much appreciate everyone doing this. I'm going to uh, work hard to to get this option in there with the idea that we have sort of marching orders and we know how to move forward with this. Um, and so that will result in PRs against these things. Um, I very much appreciate feedback both now and on and on those PRs to to be able to add and clarify things as we need. Thank you for everyone for coming, and I hope your week is a great one. And we will see you next time.